Hi guys, and welcome to the wonderful world of renal transport. If you're wondering what exactly it is, it's just the way certain substances travel through the kidney, more specifically the nephron, which is a functional unit of the kidney. Here's a nephron. It's called the functional unit of the kidney because it's responsible for three types of renal transport, which are filtration, reabsorption, and secretion of substances. This is a simplified drawing of the glomerular capillary containing substances ready to be transported. Also noted are the Bowman's capsule and the peritubular capillaries. The only type of transport which occurs between the glomerular capillary and the Bowman's capsule is filtration, indicated by the blue arrow. Then in the tubule, substances can either be reabsorbed, indicated by the red arrow, which then go back into the circulation, or secreted into the tubule, indicated by the yellow arrow, via the peritubular capillaries, which then are eliminated from the body. Here I've overlapped my simplified drawing with the more elaborate one so you can get a better idea of the structures and how they're positioned. Now that we have a better understanding of this, we can go ahead and look at how specific substances are transported through the nephron. So the first one here is pretty easy. Proteins, such as albumin, are not transported because they are too big to pass through the small capillaries. Only under pathological conditions where the glomerulus isn't working properly, then only are proteins filtered and then seen in the urine. Next up is inulin. Not to be confused with insulin, they're completely different substances. Inulin is only filtered, it's not reabsorbed or secreted. For this reason, inulin is a good way to determine GFR, or glomerular filtration rate. Now we have PAH. This substance is filtered, and whatever goes into the peritubular capillaries are completely secreted back into the tubule. 100% of PAH is excreted in the urine. And for this reason, PAH is a good way to determine effective renal plasma flow, which is the amount of fluid entering the kidneys. Now we have PAH in comparison to creatinine. Creatinine is filtered and secreted, but not fully secreted because some of it does go back into the body. Also, as a side note, creatinine is, more is a more affordable test clinically to measure GFR, but less accurate than using inulin. Now we have potassium, sodium, and urea. These are filtered and then reabsorbed into the body. Not all the sodium, potassium, and urea is reabsorbed. Some of it does get excreted into the urine. Lastly, in comparison to the sodium, potassium, and urea, we have glucose and bicarbonate. These substances are fully reabsorbed, meaning none of it in a normal person should be excreted in the urine. Every cell in the body needs glucose, but in certain conditions like diabetes, there's actually a greater amount of glucose than is actually needed and are, are unable to fully reabsorb it back into the body. Therefore, some of it gets dumped out into the urine and in patients with uncontrolled diabetes, you would notice them having a presence of glucose in their urine. Now, here are some examples of transport. Let's see if we can figure them out. I would recommend putting this on pause to give yourself a few minutes to figure it out on your own, and then we can go through them together. Okay, first we have substance X. Substance X is filtered and then secreted completely. This would be a good example of PAH. Substance Y Substance Y is filtered and then reabsorbed, but also some of it is excreted. This would be a good example of sodium, potassium, or urea. Substance Z is filtered and then reabsorbed completely. This would be a good example of glucose or bicarbonate. Thank you.